Welcome back. Uh, in this episode, we're going to say goodbye to our faithful Delta DC 380 planer here. It's uh, performed valiantly, but its day has come. So I'm a big proponent uh, of building things well, buying things that are made to last, and taking care of them. There's a reason that we've got some old tractors from the 1950s that we've been running on my family farm since the 1950s. Uh, and when it comes to things like the big bandsaw and the monster thickness planer, building Arabella, uh, it's very important to me to take care of those machines and those structures and uh, to build them well, to make them easily repairable, and to keep them chugging along. Uh, so things like those big machines that are never going to be made again, they're definitely worth the time and energy to do the repairs and keep them going because they literally are irreplaceable. They will never cast uh, cast iron like that ever again. But the more modern machines like this Delta, they make basically the same machine in a bunch of different versions that uh, it comes to a point where we should just pony up and buy a new one and replace it instead of trying to keep fixing it. But if this planer had been built, kind of like we're trying to build Arabella, instead of buying a new one, we'd just replace a few parts and get it going again. But these weren't made with that kind of uh, mindset, and uh, hopefully whoever replaces Arabella and fixes her down the road after I'm long and gone will find to be repairing her enjoyable and set up well and hopefully not be cursing me and thanking me for how she was put together. Time will tell. So without further ado, let's uh, get this one out, the new one in, and get some boat work done. A couple weeks ago, we had a visitor stop by, and one of their questions for us was how many hours they thought we had spent at the thickness planer, both this little one and the big beast outside since we started the build. And I thought about it for a little while, and honestly, I think the answer is months. Literally, I think 40 hours a week, I think a couple months have been spent at this machine and the one outside. And that's one of the challenges with harvesting our own timber is we start with these big rough cut boards uh, where if you're buying things from the mill, they would rough cut them and then they would dry them and then they would run them through a planer and they would send you very close to what you wanted. So if you were ordering planking stock, you know, you would get the boards. Uh, our finish is one and a quarter, so maybe you would say one and a half inch thick planking stock. Uh, clear, these are the widths, these are the lengths, these are the price. Um, and then you would get that lumber. Now for us, we're doing all of that work of the forester who's getting the trees out of the woods as well as the sawyer and the first round of planing. So our lumber comes roughs on, it's got the little waves that are from the bandsaw blade, uh, it's dried, it's twisted, it's gotten a little gnarly, and that's where that monster planer outside is gangbusters. We can shove those huge timbers in there and get something that resembles a flat board a lot faster. And then we've been relying on the Delta here with the spiral cutter head. And this machine has performed valiantly, especially considering we bought it used, um, but it is dying. Uh, so we smoked the first motor that came with it. This is a new motor. It's one and a half horse, uh, which is what this machine came with. But it's a little slower speed uh, than what it's supposed to have. And this planer on the side over here has a gear shift so you can go in higher low speed. And that changes how fast the board goes through the machine. Uh, and that changes how many cuts per inch you have. So if you're running like softwoods through, you want to run them through fast um, because you're not really worried about that feed rate. If you're putting in, say, curly maple, uh, you're going to want that slower feed rate so that those knives are cutting less material for every revolution. This machine, it came stuck in, I'm not sure, higher low gear, um, but that's wherever it's, where it's been. Uh, we can't adjust that. Uh, something inside is, is broken. Uh, one of the feed rollers here, the bearing gave up. So when you push the lumber in, the, uh, the feed roller jumps up because the bearing's all gone. Like I said, the motor is really kind of underpowered. Uh, and I think is kind of on its way out as well. So I started running through all of the issues that we're having with this machine and thinking in my head about that conversation a few days prior. Uh, and then we wrapped up the t-shirt campaign, which did better than we expected. So thank you to everyone who bought a t-shirt. So we pulled the trigger and we bought a brand new thickness planer. 
Uh, it's 15 inches, just like this one. It's a Grizzly instead of a Delta. And it's, I think, of three horsepower instead of one and a half. And it'll have two working feed rates. And it's brand new. Uh, and I think by the end of the build, it's probably going to save us weeks worth of time. So we're going to do a little test run before we take this one apart and get it out of here. So right now, this is at two and a half inches. I've got a piece of red oak in here. And we are going to take it down to two and a quarter inches. We're going to take one quarter of an inch off of this board. And we're going to have Ben in post here and edit, start a timer for us and let us know how long this takes. And then we're going to take a quarter inch off this same board when we get the new one installed and see if we can kind of do the math and see what that looks like. All right, Ben, how long did that take? It felt like a little while. Uh, so that was to take this down from two and a half inches to two and one quarter. So we took a quarter inch off it. And then we're gonna get the new one wrestled in here. We'll take the same exact board and we'll take it from two and a quarter down to two. And we'll see how long that takes. I'm willing to bet it's going to be less time. All right, let's get this old beast out of here. All right, Joe. Go ahead, pick it on up off there. Mm. You know, if my grandpa were here, yeah. he would say that, you know, I would just pick it up and put it on the floor, but I don't want to show you guys up. Stop. Are you gonna go? Uh, are you gonna get it out of here? Well, we got nothing to pick it up with. I'm just gonna have to walk it. It's gonna be slow. Why don't we put some skids on there? It's got the bolt holes in the bottom. Take something about the size of one of those or something. Just clear the end a little bit. And... So this planer is a, you know, relatively equivalent to the Delta that we're replacing. It's got a little bigger motor on it, uh, but one of the features that's really important for us is that it's a fixed table and that the cutter head itself raises and lowers. Uh, and most machines in this size range are built the other way around, uh, where the cutter head is fixed and the table moves. And the reason we really want the fixed table is because of all these roller feeders that we have. So if the table height changes, then the rollers have to change. Um, but this way, with a fixed table, all of the rollers are the same. So if you are looking to set up an in-feed and out-feed system, that fixed table is pretty important. Uh, and the height of this machine, the base is a lot longer, taller than on the Delta. So we ended up removing a bunch of material here where we had this cribbed up. Uh, so we have this about the right height for this machine. We just have a line here and it's strung from the bandsaw over to our outfeed tables here. And this is the height that we want the table. Uh, so right now, if we measure from the base here, the table is just about 30 and three quarters. That's close enough for us. And if we come to the top here, we are just under 30 and three quarters. So if anything, the planer is going to be a smidge high, uh, which isn't really a bad thing considering how long of a distance this is. That won't cause any issues for us. 
So I think we're ready to get this string out of here and see if we can get this lifted up into place. Moment of truth. Still need to get a few things done, so I got to figure out a better attachment point in the back here for the digital readout. Uh, it's going to be really nice not to have it on the side of the machine. And I also need to get the in-feed and out-feeds put back in, but other than that, they should be functional. So I'm going to run this oak through, and this is two and a quarter inches now, and we're going to take it down to two. So we'll have done a quarter of an inch with the old Delta and a quarter inch with the new Grizzly, and we'll see what the time comparison is. So I'm gonna fire up the dust collector and fire this up. And as soon as I start, Ben, please start the timer. Uh, and since the digital readout isn't working, I'm gonna to have to check real quick with the, uh, with the tape measure here and see when we get that two inches. So at the high feed rate, this can take a bigger cut than the Delta could uh, and not mind it at all. Big thanks to Joey yesterday for helping me uh, get this thing wrestled in here and on its stand, but it would have been much more challenging to do alone. So thanks, Joe. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot faster, like a lot, lot faster. So, I, so far, I'm very happy with this. Uh, now he's gotta get the in-feeds and the out-feeds figured back out. The out-feed won't be too big of a deal. The in-feed, I think we're gonna leave a gap in here, because if you noticed, the controls are on this side, which is kind of a bummer. Um, and unless we wanna cut a hole in the cabinet and move them, which maybe we will, um, I think having a, a gap in here so you can reach in and turn it on and off will be, be very nice. We need some help. We need a lot of help. Uh, and the way that we need the help right now is with stainless steel work. So underneath the settee berth here, we've got to make a big stainless steel water tank. There's another one to go over here underneath the workbench. And there's going to be a few more aft in the boat. because so we need to have about 100 gallons of tankage. There's a lot of different ways to do water tanks, uh, but stainless steel is the way that I would really like to do them. We also have some stainless steel work to do around the wood stove, the galley stove, and in the galley in general. Uh, and stainless steel is, it just has its own quirks with bending and welding. Um, I have never TIG welded before. It would be a uh, pretty significant investment in skills and equipment to get set up to do the stainless steel work. So what we're really hoping for, fingers crossed, is that there is someone relatively locally who would be interested in helping us pick away at these stainless steel projects. None of them have to be done in any great urgency, um, but it would be great if we could get them all accomplished at some point throughout this winter. Uh, so if you own a stainless steel fabrication shop or work in one or are equipped to bend and form the stainless steel and help us weld up these tanks and the stuff that we need in the galley, please send us an email, reach out. Uh, we would love to talk to you and see if we can get something worked out because we'd love to start doing the stainless steel and it's just a little bit out of our purview. You might notice the companionway ladder is a little bit different right now. 
And that is because you're doing some work in the stern here. So this is the last section of the boat to, to really get mocked out. So as you can see, we put the cockpit back in because that really changes how things feel back here. And then that big old chunk of stove pipe, that is representative of about where the mast will be. And then we've got a big chunk of cardboard here, which is mocking up the rough space for the reefer. We've got a ladder and it's not really functional because as you can see, we land on the hull. Uh, so that footing's a little bit wobbly, but it's mocking up the space pretty well, which is what we're really trying to feel out here. And then in the back, you'll notice that there's a board and that defines where the nav table is gonna be. And in the back is a pilot berth or quarter berth, depending on what you wanna call it. So, <clears throat> so you got the piece of plywood hung in position here. And it's probably really hard to see, but I have some notes and some lines with the joggle stick. So we want the end of that bunk to be in line with the deck beam here. So we pulled that measurement and we also pulled where we want to meet up against the hull. So there's the curve and I'm going to trim it so that it's in line with the cockpit and not going over the engine so much. So the bunk will taper quite significantly in the foot, but I think that that will be fine. So that's marked as well. So now we can very carefully take it out. As you can see, I had it hanging from the deck beams with the bar clamps there. It's really nice having the deck off the boat right now for this kind of thing. We'd not be able to hang it like that if we had put the decking on. And pull out the ladder and pull out this board, which is also just hanging off a bar clamp. And I pulled out the, the last piece of homemade plywood and zipped it in half and got it upstairs. So we can pull the pattern out, lay it on there and see if we can create a bunk. Here's my pattern board and the two pieces of ply. So this one, we're gonna go stick off to the side and this is going to become the, um, the other part of the head. So the panel that runs fore and aft and has the door in it. So the rest of that will get made up with the door. So we'll stick this off to the side. So just gonna use our handy dandy joggle stick here and go and put in all the measurements, mark the points, connect the dots, cut it out, and uh, we'll see how we fit. So I'm honing in on things back here. <laughs> I get that piece of homemade plywood notched out. So I cut a couple notches where it goes around the knees and trimmed it up a little bit. So I think that is very close to its final size and I'm happy with it. It leaves quite a bit of room on the side of the engine. You'd be able to get in there pretty easily. Uh, and then we've got a piece of cardboard here for the nav table, our cardboard reefer, our makeshift mast. <laughs> and our companion way. And all of this obviously very, very, very rough, uh, but I'm trying to kind of get a feel of this space. Um, so standing at the galley here, this seems, this seems good. You got the sink, the counter, the stove. Uh, you got the reefer right here. You'll put things on the reefer, some shelves, cubbies, whatever. That seems good. And the big question is, are we gonna be able to get into and out of that pilot berth. So 
you'll have the companionway ladder to stand on, and you'll have the nav table here to stand on as well. But right now that's just cardboard, and this is just balanced in here with some clamps. So I'm gonna see if I can slide in there and not have this all go kablooey into the bilge, but we're gonna find out here. So I'm imagining, put some grab rails up here. You'll be able to step on this cardboard, which I can't right now. That's not too bad. So I think, I think a couple strategic grab points here, which we'll have to figure out. I don't think that's too bad. Be a cozy bunk. And then getting out will just be the opposite. It'll be real easy, I think when you're gonna be able to put some weight on the uh, nav table there. But I don't think that cardboard will support my weight, even though I am pretty light. All right. Ooh, that's the tip point. Obviously, you're not going to be expected to do that <laughs> gymnastics every time you want to get out of the bunk. But I think being able to put your weight back here and slide yourself all the way out. And maybe if we make like a one, two step, third step is actually stepping like onto the edge of the reefer. And then a pair of ladder steps. That'll open this up here a little bit as well. And I think that we'll be able to work with that. It's not going to be not going to be the quickest, fastest, smoothest bunk to get into. You'll have to be a little agile, but I don't think that's a big deal. If you can't get into this one, you can sleep on the SETI berth. You can't get in the SETI berth. Oh, there's the workbench. There's the four peak. So whoever is most nimble, maybe you can get this bunk. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to uh, continue the mock up here try to get this as figured out as best I can before I start building anything that's too, too solid. So here you can see we've got the piece of cardboard there roughing out kind of where the nav table is going to be. And this should work out well. If you look down the companionway ladder, you'll be able to see the chart right there on the table. So we should be able to lay out a, a chart if we need to so we can reference. And we've got that big old bulkhead on the house sides there where we can mount radios and whatever nav gear that we need. Uh, so it'll be all be very accessible from the nav station and from the cockpit. And here is the future nav table. So this is mahogany from Victoria. And these are some of the nicest, biggest boards that we have. So these, I'm not sure what this one was, but those four taper ones in the back, those were in her V-berth and those were underneath the mattress for the bunk. So she had these, <laughs> let's see, so she had these really, really big wide mahogany boards. just to hold up the mattress. So we're gonna use cedar and homemade plywood for that. And these are gonna get cleaned up and get glued together and become the nav table. So I'm gonna take these downstairs and run them through the brand spanking new thickness planer and just take a skosh off each side. I just wanna get the finish off them, 
get them a little flatter. Some of them have some tiny little bit of cupping to it and uh, get them ready for glue up. Thanks for joining in and watching today. Next week, we'll take a look at the results of the glue up for the nav table, and that will get roughed into place. More progress is made on the quarter berth, and the final form of the companionway and reefer finally come into view as well. Please give us a like if you can, and take a second to make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. And if you're new here and like what you see, join us every Friday as we get Arabella ever closer to floating away.